the other question is, what would you say to a brother or sister who are tempted to go the wrong way because they cannot get married due to financial reasons or parents won't allow them? The first thing I can tell you, and the best thing I can tell you, and we should never underestimate what I'm about to say, and one of the dangers of modernity and adopting a foreign way of looking at religion is that what I'm about to say will chastise it. And that is, I will tell both of you to fear Allah. That you should fear Allah. And of course, oh, I don't want to hear a speech where someone tells me to fear Allah. Man, that's the problem. You know, Umar ibn Khattab used to say, he said, Allah ja'ala min muttaqeen People would say to Omar, fear Allah. He said, oh Allah, make me from those people who fear Allah. Even in the Muslim world, it's considered a shame to tell someone it taqila. I remember I was in the haram once making tawaf, and there was this brother who was literally like, he was like that Spanish bull run. And he was running over sisters, dude. And I said to him, it taqila. I was like, you it taqila. And I was like, Umar ja'ala min al-mutaqeen. Like, hadha sharaf. Because that's the wasi of Allah. Allah said that we enjoyed upon those before you and you to fear Allah. And the objective of Ramadan is to develop this fear of Allah, this staying away from sins and imtithalu bi awamirihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, what I would say is what my mother told me that you're cruising for a bruising. That if you continue down this path, you might fall into a serious, serious problem. God forbid you commit zina. You know, zina is a horrible thing. The Prophet ﷺ said that the zani and the zani are going to be burned completely in the barzakh. And the ulama al-Ghazali said they are going to be burned because al-jaza'u min jins al-amal. Because he said zina, intercourse, is one of the few things where the entire body experiences pleasure, thus the entire body is burned for it. SubhanAllah. And the Prophet considered it from the mubiqat, the destructive sins. Number three is I would implore you to go talk to an imam or someone that you trust. Maybe not the imam, but someone that you trust who can go be an arbitrator for you and your parents. Wallahi, parents, we're destroying our young people with this garbage, man. Wallahi, man, it's crazy. You know, I have a, a brother, a sister in my community from Africa, and an African-American brother wants to marry her, and her parents told me he's black. And I said, where are you from, Iceland? Because there are certain jahili pathologies that have mixed into our understanding of reality, man. And that goes back to what I said earlier, the centrality of building a personality on wahi is the first step towards having a strong spiritual state. Not a bayat to someone, you know, not this fashionable, cheesy spirituality. You know, the first way to draw nearer to Allah is with his book. And that's why Uthman ibn Affan, when someone asked him what's the best way, the quickest way to draw near to Allah, he said, I know of no easier way than ila bi karimati, except with his words. And anyone who teaches you, and I'm saying this, and I, I, I'm old enough and I don't care no more. You know what I mean? I don't care no more. I got baby's kids. Anyone who comes at you and says, stay away from Quran, stay away from the hadith, stay away from revelation, stay away from knowledge, I'm your bridge, you know, to the paradise. Stay away from these people. What did Junaid say? Junaid is the founder of the Mutasawifin. He said, if you see a man, yutiru fi sama, if you see a man flying in the heavens, in the sky, don't listen to him until you see how he acts with the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet so you need to find someone who can be an arbitrator between you and your parents. And parents, I'm telling you, your daughters are suffering. We have 41-year-old girls in our community who aren't married because their parents said no to everyone who came to their door. And we have men well into the mid-30s who had the princess wife ideal, right? They wanted to marry, what's her name, Ashwari Rai Bread. I don't know what her name is. <coughs> and she never showed up. And we have, you know, the brother says, I want to marry Khadija. Well, then be like Muhammad. And you'll get Khadija. And what's happening is they're in their mid-30s, and we know the shelf life of, unfortunately, and I say this all the time, sister, your shelf life is not 26. Your shelf life is Jannah. And that's because, again, we look and identify ourselves as being inhabitants of the dunya. We are only visiting here. We are here temporary. The prophet said like sitting under the tree to get some shade. But ultimate success and happiness 
is in the hereafter. And the sign of true spiritual soundness is that when someone is willing to sacrifice some of the comfort for this life, knowing that ultimately they will be comfortable in the hereafter. So finding an arbitrator to help you, because this is not easy, because when you get around each other, man, and you start kicking it, and you start to let your guards down, and you begin to feel comfortable, oh, we're friends, and now we're not friends, we're BFF, whatever, all these weird words, and then we're that, and we're this, and we're this, and then bad al. And then you're coming to the imam, uh-oh, and the imam's like, I can't do nothing for you, Ak. You're in big trouble now. And I have had Muslim women come to me in my community, not in Boston, in other places, looking for abortions. And you know how old these girls were? 35 years old. And these were beautiful women. And I said, what happened? They said, everyone that came to be my potential husband, my father slammed the door in their face. And I went out and worked in the professional field. And the non-Muslim, you ain't worried about you, Dad. Brad Pitt ain't worried about Baba. Well, Brad, you got to talk to Baba. Look, girl, DJ got his father in love again. Ain't no need to talk to Daddy. Real talk. Because he doesn't know that. And you have a young woman or man who has insecurity issues because marriage is so important to us that homeboy got more gay than the Parker brothers, man. And you're in trouble. And the last thing I will say is that you need to be our strong friends who can reinforce you to fear Allah and to do what's right. And I'm an imam. If I believe that a man and a woman are good for each other and there's no religious reason for their parents to say no, I will marry you. And I don't care if I lose my job. I'll stand in front of Allah, in front of that board and say, that board was taghut. This board was a board that wanted to impose from the point of maqasid sharia, opinions and ideas that were pushing our young generation into zina. So finally, finding religious leadership that will stand up for you if you're right. And that you'll be willing to listen to Wallahu alam wa billahi tawfiq. All right, takbir. All right, uh, give you time to get your questions in, right? MashaAllah. No, no, it's working, it's working. <laughs>